So I think we are live. Yes, sir. We're we are Facebook live. You see, it says live and it's counting down there. How's everyone doing tonight? What's up there, Matt? You tell me, Steve. You know, we're waiting for uh, Datwin to come on. And uh, as soon as he does, I heard he's got some exciting news that he's going to share with us. Yes, but, uh, sir. In the meantime, what do you think about John Jones? Ay, ay, ay. Guy can't keep himself out of trouble. He can't. can't. Apparent, apparently, he, he, he shot all, he was shooting his gun off or whatever, and then they, they, the police stopped him. They found the shell casing in his car. Come on. It's, and he someone called drunk. the police. Uh, someone yeah. called the police. Yep. I think uh, he was he was over the limit. He was twice over the legal limit. Of, for uh, alcohol. I don't know if they tested him for anything else, but what do you do with a guy like that? Unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It's, it, it's, it's, it really is. It's sad, you know, because he's such a good fighter. Everyone loves watching him. So we got that here. That called in. That's in? That's in. What's there he is. That? Hey, what's hey Dad. What's How you doing, on? man? Give me one second. Let me uh, link up my Bluetooth here. Okay. Good to see you. Yes. Thank you. All right. Uh, we'll give him a second there. We'll give him a second. So, uh, yeah. yeah, he, John Jones is, uh, you know, I, I, you would think he's got all that money that he could just, Hire driver and hang out yeah, with him. Yeah, he can hire a driver. Out. He can get his own his own Jones mobile. You know what I mean? Yeah, a permanent driver, so he doesn't get into trouble. Or a permanent driver. security detail. Yep. To follow yeah. him around and make sure he stays out of trouble, like you know, like the president. All right, I'm uh, connected. Uh, I'm connected now. What's up, that? Hey, Dad. I'm good. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. What's okay. up, guys? So how's it going, man? I we we last saw you on uh, what February fifteenth at Bare Knuckles. Right. You knocked uh, you knocked your opponent out in the in the first round. Tell us about yeah, that. that was, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it was exciting. You know, uh, you know, I knew it was going to be a war and. Uh, I just happened to uh, catch him on the right spot and uh, won that fight. So I was looking forward to uh, fight the champion, Johnny Benford, but uh, this pandemic here put everything back on hold. So um, they haven't really officially canceled the fight yet. So um, I'm actually uh, just waiting to be here or heard of what's going to happen. So let me get this right. Your next fight with Bare Knuckles is going to be for the championship. Is that correct? Yes, it, it's with uh, it's with Bedford. Yes. Wow. Excellent. Congratulations, man. So let's go back a little yes, bit. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, let's go back a little ways because all right, in two thousand and six. Let, let, let's let's see how Dad's doing first. Dad, how you doing, man? You surviving? <laughs> I'm good. I'm I'm hang. Yeah, we hanging in there. You know, I'm opening the restaurant. I was doing some cooking. <clears throat> That's why I got a little late on here. Uh, people were ordering, so you know, my wife oh, made me to, go in the kitchen and, to, and cook. So sorry to get you while uh, <laughs> yeah. while you had to cook. Sorry about that. I saw some of that lobster uh, pho you were cooking the other day. That looked good, man. Yeah. Got so the coffee. restaurant's yeah, open. Yeah, we're still doing some business here. Well, that's good. Yeah, just for takeout only. A lot of uh, you know, everybody's uh, uh, you know, out of work and they stay yeah. at home, so. They they're hungry, you know. They want to eat something different. So we we got some unique uh, food here. What does it exactly. look like up in uh, Vero Beach? Well, how's it look? Dead streets are dead and everything, or? Yeah, I mean, uh, everybody's uh, locked in the house. And, you know, yeah. if they do get out, they, they 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 just separate from everybody. So social distance. Uh, Vero Beach is a small little town, you know, with a lot of elderly people. So people here are very cautious because most of them are retired. So, uh, I mean, there was only like 12 cases here. I don't know how much is it now, but the, the people from New York, they come down here, they bring it. I mean, they, they came yeah. down here uh, like two weeks ago and they brought a few a few cases here. But other than that, I, I'm, it's a very good, safe town here. 
Yeah. And what's the name of your restaurant in case uh, our, Lusaga. any of our viewers want to go? Right, what's let, the name let, of the restaurant? I'm outside right now. Yeah, Lusaga. I'm outside right now. Right, Let's Lusaga see the sign. Russian right there. See if you can see it. Miss Let's Saigon. See yeah, I go, I go back a little bit. Yeah, we got it uh, there. Let me go well, there. Yeah. We, we've eaten there many times. It's the yeah, best, yeah. the I best mean, Vietnamese kind of food. I yeah. wish I wish it was closer to yeah. me because I'd be Miss there Saigon a few times a week. <laughs> yeah, you don't deliver right. to Boynton yeah. Beach, do you? Yeah, I wish you were closer too. <laughs> Oh no, that's gonna cost a lot of money. <laughs> okay. Anything is possible, just money talk, you know. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, look, there's Mike. Hey, how you how doing, Mike? Uh, Mike? Hey, guys. Steve there, huh? What's up, Dad? How you been, man? Mike right. decided to join us. So, Dad, I have, I have a question for you. Here. Yeah, you're brave. Okay, there you are. Can you guys hear? All right, so back. In... Huh. My... Can you hear us? You can hear us? No. No? Hmm. All right. I don't think Jack can hear us. Can you hear I us? I can't hear anything. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah I can, can hear, you. hear you. That's weird. Let me hear. Is that better? Okay. Can you hear? And oh, now we lost him. Now we lost him. Um, see if you can text him. Stay, tell him to stay inside with the. You know, closer to the mm -hmm. Wi-Fi. Okay. How about now? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear no, us? No, I got, I got, I can't hear anything. Let me, let me exit and come right back. How about that? Okay. Okay. okay go near the Wi-Fi or try. What's up, there, Mike? What's up? What's going on? Okay. So, Mike, you remember that card when we saw Dad in 2016? It was a Mayweather promotion down at the Hard Rock. Yep. You remember that night? I do. That was a that was a great night of fights for us. Um, you remember the card? You remember who else was on that card? I, I can't remember. I know that Dad fought really early. We showed up, and he was like the first fight on there. Um, yeah, it might have been one of the earlier fights. Uh, Steve Gaffard was on there. Yeah, Daya Davis was on that card. Yeah, Antonio yeah. Williams. And you remember who the headliner was? I can't remember that far back. Rances, Bartholomew, and, uh, and Bay. And, yeah. That was the same card? That was the same card, yeah. Same night, same card, 2016. I, it was over the summer. You don't remember that. It's no, a long. I, I, I know. I remember, no, because I I think you're mixing cards. I know Dat was fought at the Hard Rock, but that was like one of his more recent fights before he uh, had his hiatus. His wife was super pregnant at the time, uh, and that was the where they had the the black curtain. They didn't want any media going back behind it. He was like the first fight that came on. We came a little late. The one with uh, Bartholomew and Bay was this was the Don King card. That's when um, it was King or Mayweather. That was that I was. Thought was I thought no, that was King's card. That was King's card. Okay. Was, yeah, yeah, that was early on. That was um, I think Mickey Bay and and Rex Bartholomew was going back maybe almost seven years. No, that was, was that was yeah. No, it wasn't seven. I think it was two thousand, maybe two thousand. Omar Henry, I'm pretty sure it was the card Omar Henry fought on. It was his last card before he passed away. So we're hmm. going back a few years. Well, wow. uh, what's his name? Caleb Plant was on that card. Who's now the IBF middleweight champ? Yes, he was. Yep, that was a uh, was a long time ago. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Yeah, what was it? Yeah, um, that was a good card though. Oh yeah, no, it was a great card. Definitely good night. I mean, the main fight was a great fight. Mickey Bay definitely put up a great fight. Uh, you know, Bart yeah. had the best of them, unfortunately. And we just can't remember what year it was. That's okay. <laughs> I'm telling you. That's I, all right. I, I want to say it was that Don King card. So it was, it had to be, I mean, I think Amir Imam was on the card. And that was, um, man, that was really early in his career. Are you sure? Yeah. yeah. Dude, we're thinking, it, we're mixing two cards. I, I know it because, yeah, maybe even uh, three cards. <laughs> not Amir Aman was not at the one on. Uh, I don't think he was on the card that we saw at Hard Rock. This was at Hard Rock Live, not not yeah. one of the. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what um, I mean. But I remember when that when that was on that one. That was I think either the fight or before the fight where he fought Miguel Flores. It was like right before it. 
it was uh, after he had about a year and a half hiatus or no, maybe two and change hiatus um, where he hadn't fought for a while. And that's when Steve and I met him over at uh, Immokalee, West coast of Florida at the Vietnamese restaurant. And then he was, he was just looking for a fight. He's like, if you guys know anything, let me know. And the next thing you know, he was on that hard rock card, maybe like a year after we had that conversation. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now the hard rock card was June, 2016. All right. It was, uh, hold on a minute. I'll tell you exactly who was on it. Exactly. Oh, Javante Davis was on it too. Caleb Plant, Steve Gaffard. All right, Dad Daya Davis was on it. Um, Antonio Williams, Latondria Jones, and uh, yeah, it was Rancid, uh, Rancid Bartholomew, and Mickey Bay. And that was with that. That was the same card with that. That was the same card with that. So I guess I'm thinking of the fight that he had at the Hard Rock after, because he's fought again there then because he fought much later than that more recently than that card well that was in 2016 then the next year in 2017 he had to fight against uh miguel flores and that was his last professional fight correct that's right that was his last fight <laughs> yeah um just interesting how he was on that same card he, he, we might have seen him at the Hard Rock. He might have been hanging out there, but that's, he wasn't. Uh, I don't think he had another fight there. All right, his last fight in the Hard Rock, Rock was in uh, 2008. Okay. Yeah, so that was a while ago. Yeah, but uh, where is the guy? We've got to get him back on here. He can tell us all this better than we can. So he fought Miguel Flores. He, right. he stopped him in, in what, like the fifth round? All right, TKO. Yep. Miguel Flores goes on to fight for the title. Yep. And That's Dat right. can't get another. He, he was never able to get another professional boxing fight. Yeah, that's what – and I'd love to get him on so we can talk about that because, you know, I, I know his – how he, how emotional he is about that too. And, uh, yeah, it's true. And, you know, he um, – sometimes they say in boxing the worst thing you can do is win. Because you put yourself in a situation where you don't get any good fights after that. I mean, look, the guy wasn't ranked, and he was a threat to everyone in that division. Right. And if it wasn't meaningful for them to beat him because it didn't, you know, increase their stock in any way, why take on a challenge like that? You don't, you don't fight a dangerous fighter. So it was unfortunate because I know his management, his promotion, everything wasn't really kind of sinking together at that time. Because if he had had that kind of a fight, if he'd already had the right kind of person behind him, he would have jumped right into a title fight behind it. But uh, too much time went by. He fell out of the rankings, and that was the end of his career as far as – I mean, at the time. Yeah, well, something must have happened because the I remember the guy that he fought in 2016 at the Hard Rock, that guy was 8 and 17. Right. He's Seuss, Louis, you know. You don't go from <laughs> fighting a guy 8 and 17 to, to fighting uh, Miguel Flores, who was like – who was undefeated at the time, you know. He was like, like 20 – yeah. I was like 20, 22 and 0. He – um. That was the thing, because he, like I said, he had been he had been on hiatus two and a half years. I don't know how how long it had been, and uh, he was just looking for anything. So I think he signed back with, I think it was with Marshall Kaufman, and um, he gave him a couple of fights, a couple of fights against guys with upside down records. You know, easy blue throw him, and I think it was that third fight that he got with Miguel Flores. They just figured, hey, you know, the guy's been around. He's a journeyman. Let's step yeah. over him. It was in uh, Miguel Flores' backyard. It was supposed to just be an easy night for Miguel Flores to showcase his style. And that was like a 50 to one underdog. He just came out and stopped him, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, a lot of people lost money that night. Um, and it's, uh, he credits foe. And I know he'd love to tell us that. Yes. I remember we interviewed him and he talked about the foe and what's in the foe and the bone marrow and the, all that stuff. And, um, Here he is. He's back. What's up, Dad? Hey. I'm back, guys. You know what, Dad? Hey, hey, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you now. I had we some technical difficulty with okay. uh, the earpods here. Yeah, we just went over your your whole story. We want to know how you went from going to that fight in 2016 at the at the Hard Rock. All right, it seemed like you were the one that 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 they were spotlighting, right? You were fighting a guy who had like 17 losses. You know, you won that fight. You go from him to fighting Miguel Flores. Who was twenty-two and zero, and you stopped him in the fifth round, 
And then that was it. That just seems like so much kind of mismanagement or something going on there. Can you tell us about that? Yeah. Um, you know, when I fought Miguel Flores, um, what happened is when I signed with uh, Kings of Motion, I, I told him that um, I, I want to fight on TV. I don't want to fight, you know, tune-up fights and, and some undercard. So um, after my son gave birth, uh, he, was, he was born in June June 14, 2016, right? So um, I took like six months off, and I told my promoter, look, don't even call me if you don't have a TV fight because I'm not fighting on the undercards, uh, you know, with no exposure because uh, I'm not at an age where I continue to do this. So he said, right. okay, we give you, we give you a fight. Uh, that was my third fight signing with him. So uh, he's like, look, we got you a TV fight. We're going to get you as the main event on Fox Sports against an undefeated kid. You beat him, your life is going to change. We're going to get you bigger money fights and a tie the shot, possibly. And I was so excited about that, you know. And I, I trained very hard. And um, I, had, I was like, you know, I'm gonna, I got to beat this kid because if I don't beat this kid, Miguel Flores, I poss possibly, you know, it's going to be the end of my career. So, um, you know, I, I, I went and trained as hard as I could and, and be as prepared, uh, well prepared as I could. And, uh, and I went into his, his backyard in Houston, 50 to one underdog. And, uh, you know, I, I won on a long shot and, uh, and everybody was excited for me. And, you know, maybe they were looking that I'll probably fight for a world title soon, but, um, that wasn't the case. You know, after I won, um, nobody could get me a fight. Nobody could get me another TV fight. And, uh, my promoter is trying to keep me active and, and trying to put me on some undercard on the card fight again. And I like, look, I just fought a main event on Fox Sport, beat yeah. a kid. And now I got, I got to go backwards and fight on some on the cards, no TV. I was like, this is, this is very, um, poly political, you know? So I like, you know, oh, I yeah. quit boxing and I told my wife, like, you know, boxing is, is corrupt because even though I beat them, they didn't give me another shot. So I said, I'll open up the restaurant. So it took me two years to get the restaurant. I said, you know, I quit boxing. I don't want anything to do with this open the restaurant and be a business owner and, and just uh, run the business, you know? And yeah. after I got this restaurant open, I was like, man, I, I, I you know, took almost 20 years um, in boxing trying to get a title shot to be a world champion. I know I'm capable of it. And I never got the right people behind me. So I said, no, maybe I'll give it one more shot. And I bought a talk to a lot of people. Nobody wants, wants to give me a fight. That is, uh, you know, yeah. unless I was going in to lose, you know, if I was going to fight somebody on TV, they basically going to give me less than four weeks notice. And I was like, wow, this, this whole, that's the whole name of the boxing world that, you know, they, if you're not the, the promoter's guy, they're going to bring you in to lose only. And, um, and so I said, you know what, I, let, let me see if I can get with David Feldman. And, uh, and that's how it all gets started because. I, I, I wanted to do something else, you know, if I can't be in boxing, I wanted to do something out of combat sports, you know, because I always wanted to do MMA, kickboxing and all those out of sports, but I never got the opportunity to because I was so focused on being a, a boxing world champion. So that was that was my whole story right there. Right. Weren't you at talks one time to, to fight Ryan Garcia? Am I remembering um, that correctly? Well, well, you know, they can't give me because I talked to Golden Boy, um, the matchmaker. He ba basically, you know, Ryan Garcia was like, you know, 12 and 0, uh, uh, 13 and 0 at that time. And and I was talking to uh, Robert Diaz, and I was trying to ask him to help me because I call up Golden Boy and, and Robert Diaz. I had I had dealt with him in the past because um, he did offer me a couple of fights before. Uh, and I called him and I said that um, you know, I'm promotional free, I'm management free. Can you help me out? Can you give me a fight? And it's like, you know what? Let me see what I can do for you. And um, he's like, just wait. We're going to get you a fight. Um, and he's like, are you going to be ready in December? Uh, possibly a fight at Madison Square Garden. So wow. I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll be ready. And uh, I think they were trying to match me with Ryan Garcia because he was supposed to fight at Madison Square Garden. And I was like, you know, uh, they didn't tell me who it was, but I'm pretty sure it's Ryan Garcia because they always trying to test me with undefeated prospect and and I just piece it together. And I was in training again, and you know, but obviously they never, it never came through. They never called me back. So now, would that have been easy for you to just jump up and wait to a lightweight to fight him? What is that? 
I said, would that have been easy for you to, to put on that weight, to jump up and fight at lightweight? You know, um, I always spar big ice ball with a 140-pounder. Like when I was fight, training for Miguel Flores, I was sparring with a 140-pounder, uh, Samuel Nick, where he was 140 pounds. He fought Lamont Pearson through 12 rounds. You know, he's a world-class fighter. And I spot with him. I was able to handle him on ground. I was able to, you know, you know, be at my best again. Um, I always it's just that when I lose the weight, I become very weak. And I said, you know what? Um, I don't care what weight class I fight. As long as it's 130, 140, it's easier to fight with me at the heavier weight class. Um, because I, I'm at full strength, you know, when I lose all that weight to get down to 126. You're free. Uh, uh, I'm, 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 I, I was, I, I don't, I'm a lean guy, really. Yeah. So I walk around yeah. like. Breaking up a little, we're not sure what's happening there. Yeah. You still with us, Dad? Can you hear us? He's frozen. He's frozen. I have this technology, I tell you. <laughs> um, this is the, the sequel, Frozen 3. Yeah. <laughs> frozen 3, the Dat Win story. I know. I, it's crazy, man. He, he beat someone, you know, an, an undefeated kid, and then he can't get another fight. Yeah. Like I said, I wanted to ask him the same thing about what I was just saying. You know, sometimes you, you lose when you win. <laughs> and, uh, you know, how difficult that is if you don't have everything kind of set up already to go. And, um, you know, he didn't have everybody in line to, to make that happen for him, unfortunately. And too much time went by. So, Right. But, but like I was saying, it's his fight before, the one in, in Hard Rock that we saw, he was not the opponent. You know, the other guy was the opponent. So right. Right. He, uh, he, you know. I don't, I don't know what happened there. Well, you know, he's trying to stop up and fight A-class fighters. They figured this guy, Miguel Flora, was just, you know, in line to just take the belt next. And uh, so he was definitely the B-side of that fight. And, you know, yeah. he, he proved that that should have been the case, that he should have been such an underdog, obviously. Exactly. But, uh, terrifies people. You know, they don't want to step on, you know, try to take that warm-up fight. Look, we talked about Amir Imam earlier in the fight, right? So he fought Adrian Granados, who had a couple of losses to his record. You know, he wasn't even known then. And uh, Amir was a number one junior light or junior welterweight in the world at the time. And he took that yes. fight in Canada, you know, to get himself set because he was supposed to fight the winner of what was it? Uh, Lucas Matisse and um, oh, what's that tall, that tall Ukrainian guy, uh, whatever it was. Uh, oh, Postal, Victor Postal. And uh, he was supposed to take the winner of that. He says, I can't wait around for these guys to figure it out. Let me take this tune up fight, fought Adrian Granados and surprise, took a loss. Took a long time for him to come back from that too. Yeah, it did. It did. It's it's a rough business. And then what does that do? He he enters into another rough business, the restaurant business. <laughs> Anyone I know that's ever been in the restaurant business said it's the hardest business in the world. You know. Yeah. Um, but I guess the, the guy likes challenges. And then, yeah, if that wasn't enough, so your knuckle. I mean, just throw that in the mix. Yeah, and then and now he's in. Uh, but he's doing great in 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 bare knuckle, right? So he started. He had. His first fight there, um, and he won. All right, and then he got a. Where is it? How you doing, Dad? Yeah, I'm sorry, my for some reason my phone here wants to it stay for a little while. It started lagging up, so I have to switch it to a new one here. Yeah. Okay, no problem. Sorry. Yes. I'm on. So we're on one, to, so It should be fine. We're on to your bare knuckle career now. We're talking <laughs> yeah, we, about your bare knuckle career, so. I remember you started out. You got a one fight deal with uh, with Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. They just yeah. wanted to see how you do. Yeah. And uh, tell us about that first fight. That was with uh, Thompson. Um, Thompson. You know, okay. I was, yeah, I, I I was supposed to fight uh, Matt Murphy, and uh, I was training for him, and uh, he pulled out. You know, um, I was I was actually kind of happy that he pulled out because I like because I was sick that week. I mean. Uh, Mike and Steven was there. I think yeah. they interviewed me that week and I didn't let them know that I was sick, but I think my tone of voice kind of sound like it. So, and I, I so after, after you guys left the, the, the gym, that's when my nose started running. 
I'm like, I'm, I'm like, <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> and and then a couple of days later, you know, they said that my opponent was pulled out. So I was like, maybe all of this happened for a reason, you know? Yeah. And um, I think maybe God was watching over me. And uh, I know I have to look very impressive for my pro debut in Baranaco. So, uh, you know, um, I was like, oh man, I'm sick. And uh, if I cancel this fight, I might not get another opportunity. You know, David might, might just uh, said, screw him. You know, he's not going to give me another fight. So, um, so when they said they get, they got a replacing for me and I said, you know what, I'm going to fight on because it's only five too many rounds. And, um, even though I'm sick, uh, I can do it. You know, it's no big deal. It's only 10 minutes of fighting. And, uh, sometimes I don't even train. I can fight, you know, uh, four, 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 three minute rounds in boxing. So, uh, that should have been easy uh, for me. So when I fought Travis Thompson, um, it was very different compared to boxing, you know? Yeah. And, uh. And uh, uh, my my mindset in that fight was, you know, just to go five rounds. Don't try to slug with him, and and you know, make make the fight easy, you know. So um, that's what I was trying to do because I know I have limited stamina because I was sick. So I know if I if I go hard every single round, I won't be able to make it. And so I was focused on more of boxing. So that's what you saw saw me in the first fight was more of a boxing uh, fight in bare knuckle. But the second fight, when I fought um, uh, Adele, I was like, you know what? This is going to be an all-out war because I'm in great shape. I can go hard every single minute, every single round for five rounds. So somebody's getting knocked out. And that's what I did. I went in there, and I had that mentality that I'm going to go hard every single round, cut the ring off, and force them to fight. And it just happened to end in the first round, you know? Yeah. yeah. So well, I, the two yeah. fights were, were were very different. The first one went the distance, and you are boxing him. You you were showboating in there, you know. Um, you were sticking yeah. your chin out. I re I remember that fight, and uh, and he just couldn't hit you. But that that Travis Thompson has been in. I think he's been in the most bare knuckle events more than anyone else, hasn't yeah. he? He's been in like five of them or something, you know. So he had a little more experience with the bare knuckle. It, that didn't bother you at all, did it? No, I mean, like I said, Travis Thompson, we got to know each other very well after that fight. And, man, that guy that guy is an animal for real because I, 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 we were set, sitting in the, the last fight together, and I, we were just talking. I said, man, why, why are you hitting your knuckle against each other so hard? I'm like, that would hurt my hand I'm doing that. He's over there hitting his, his knuckle on the ground, like not even wrapped up nothing. He's just hitting the floor with it and hitting the wall. Yeah. I was like, this guy crazy. I mean, his knuckle is like a brick, you know. And I know. he trained his knuckle. He trained his knuckle very well for that. And uh, and and he has he had a really good chin. And um, I mean, my knuckle was, was so swollen when I was just trying to hit him. So, um, I don't even want to hit him anymore. <laughs> we had a good time in that fight. Yeah. You looked like you were having fun in that fight. And uh, we'll 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 post that. I, I think it's on YouTube now. We'll post the, a link to it on on our Facebook page so people can watch it. Because you definitely you looked like you were having a great time in there. You know. Yeah, we 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 were having a good time. We like I said, uh, in that fight, I, my mindset is to go five rounds. Because um, you know, when I was talking to David Feldman, right, and I said, look, I have two choices, right. One was to go in there and knock the guy out right away, and and show no skill. Or two display my skill and, and 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 bring something new to bare knuckle so that was, i had two choices and it was that was in my mindset i saw like but you know when i got sick i had to change my mindset i said you know what i have to try to box in there and look good and show what people i could do uh, so the second fight my mindset was different because i was in tip-top shape i said this is going to be a fight i go in for the knockout so uh, and, and so it, it shows that i'm capable of doing both you know yeah, and you, have, you have less of uh, less of a chance of your knuckles breaking your knuckles, hitting them a lot less times, you know. Right, right, yeah, and, and plus uh, Adele, he's more of um, a, a MMA fighter, so his style is very different. You know, he yeah. he comes, he moves, he moves, and then you know, or when you when you're trying to uh, you know close the the, the distance, he, he jumps right in and, and, and hits you. So you have to be prepared for that, and I. Uh, with Travis Thompson, is different because he's a boxer too. You know, he had 22 professional boxing fights, so he's a veteran in boxing. Yeah. So the technique were pretty similar. Uh, it's just that I just, I just was more, more, um, 
uh, experience than him, you know, in boxing. So I was able to, to uh, you know, have an easier time with Travis Thompson. But with, with Adele, Adele has gotten so much better uh, from yeah. the fights, the, the earlier fights that I watched him. You know, he was, uh, he has improved did, a lot. Did he, did he put you to the to the canvas for a second? You, you know, um, like for I said, For the first know, time in your life? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, to tell you the truth, I didn't even know how I got knocked down because I wasn't hurt or anything. And then, and he pulled my head and hit me at the same time. Uh, so when I watched the replay, he, he caught me with a, a, an uppercut right on my um, my right eye. And it opens up a, a small little cut there. And uh, and I was on the floor. So it was more of a, a pool in my head. It hit me at the same time. And, and I, I went down, but I wasn't hurt. And, uh, you know, when I got up, I was like, I was like it's going to be an all-out war. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not I'm not holding back. Because I, at first, you know, I, I was kind of like, I have to kind of watch how I was throwing the punch. But when, when he knocked me down, I was like, it's going to be an all-out war. And when he holds my head again, I'm not stopped throwing punches. And uh, the first time he he held my head and I, I kind of like trying to hit his body, but uh, like the key is to get experience and I, I think I gained some experience from those two fights. For sure, for sure. So we were talking, yeah. you know, just before we kind right, of so that's what... the bare knuckle stuff, uh, going back to the boxing for a bit. I, and I was talking about when we lost you that uh, sometimes when you win, you actually lose. And in that circumstance, I'm referring to when you beat Miguel Flores. And at that point, you couldn't get that fight that you wanted. And then, you know, you were dangerous to everybody. Why was anybody going to look to fight you? At that point, you didn't have a ranking. So there was no benefit to them beating you. And if they right. lost to you, it could hurt their career. So do you think that had a lot to do with why, you know, people were ducking you and you couldn't find a right, the right kind of fight? Um, yes, you know, I, I became a danger, dangerous, I mean, I've been a dangerous opponent through my whole career, you know, um, in boxing, um, because there's so many big promoters out there. If you're not the, the guys, uh, you know, you're not signed with a big promoter, um, they're not gonna, they're not gonna put the time or the money out to, to, uh, showcase you, you know? So that was my case. I didn't have, uh, I didn't have a big promoter, um, you know, Marshall Covenant, he had a lot of fights, but basically a lot of them were non-TV. And he he did a uh, um, a deal with uh, with, uh, with El Hamin where he 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 telecast a lot of the shows for them. And I was I was signed with him, so he was able to you know um, you know got me in one of those fights. But uh, after I won, um, you know, I think El Hamin has no interest in uh, in uh, you know giving me another fight. And then so I had to go with Golden Boy or Top Rank, and Top Rank got a lot of good fighters and for me to be 30 something years old you know they don't want to they don't want to promote a guy that has very uh low fan base secondly you know he at his point where he's almost uh 30 something years old you know yeah they like right. to uh they like to, to to sign these uh 15 16 year old kids right Top rank is pretty uh, well known for doing just that so you know when you beat miguel flores i know you know, there's one thing that you credited to that. Oh, you, called, you kept telling me it was, it was all about foe. So I want you <laughs> right. to tell everybody out there listening all about foe and, and what it is and how good it is for you. Um, see, uh, usually, you know, before I, I use a cut weight and uh, I would just drink Pedialyte. Pedialyte has elect electrolytes in there, you know, for, uh, potassium, sodium, and stuff like that to replenish your body because when you cut in 15 pounds, and your body is basically at its lowest point and, and you dehydrate. That's a lot harder to die, you know, because they don't have they cut so much weight, they don't have enough fluid in their brain. And when it's time when they get hit so much in the head that the the the, the, the brain is you know moving back and forth and it creates a lot of swelling. So that's why it causes a lot of death. And uh, so for me, when I fought Miguel Flores, uh, my wife was cooking pho. So we brought uh, the soup with us to the weigh-in. You know, we, we had the container. Uh, hot soup, and instead of drinking Peter Lights, I was right after uh, right when I dropped the scale, I was drinking that soup because usually when I'm cutting weight, I'm dehydrated. You know, I haven't eaten anything for almost two days, and you know, haven't drink anything. You know, you you basically just killing your body trying to make that weight because you don't want to be overweight. You know, and that's the difficulty with a lot of artists. They cut too much weight, and they don't um, you know take care of their body to um, get enough fluid back in the body. And your body can only take one liter per hour. So when I used to make a lot of mistakes, I used to drink like two, three pee like in one hour. And what you, what happens is uh, it triggers you to pee. 
the access uh, fluid in your body and so you become more dehydrated. So in the fight, I, I took my time and drink one liter of time and just eat small meals. You gotta eat small meals because your stomach is then shrink and you haven't eaten anything for a couple of days. So you have to eat small meals to let the body digest and slowly build its way up, you know? And so that's one thing I did correct throughout my whole career. Um, eat small meal every hour, drink one liter every hour until my body was back to its normal normal weight. So, you know, by the time I fought Miguel Floyd, if you see my size in there, I probably gained back uh, 15 pounds, 12 to 15 pounds. So uh, I look a lot bigger than Miguel Floyd because, you know, I, I was dehydrated. And I, I was able to replenish all that fluid back in, you know. A lot of fighters, what happened is when they, when they train for a fight, they cut too much weight and they don't get to gain all their weight back. You know, even though they walk around the same way I walk around, but when they're fighting at 126 or 130, they, they, they get down too early. They get down to 132, 133. And, and once they jump on that scale, their body, their stomach shrinks, so they can't gain all that weight back. You know, look at Artur Gatti. When he fought, he used to cut a lot of weight. He used to cut like 20 yeah. pounds. And, and uh, you know, he gained a lot of weight afterwards. You know, he has an advantage. Uh, that's what a lot of MMA fighters do, too, you know. And if you look at a lot of MMA fighters, they are bigger than the size they are because they've been a wrestler. If you're a wrestler, there's a, you know, they, they have been cutting weight throughout their whole life, so they know how to do it correctly. You know, they do it after uh, soaking their body in hot bathtub makes you sweat. And uh, that's something I learned as well, you know, from reading over the year. Sounds good. So you're going to stick with your foe. That sounds like a, a good strategy. <laughs> yeah, we, we yeah, want to I mean, come up there and, and and have some of that. We want to have some of you, some of the foe at your restaurant because I've I've had very good. You've had it. I, I've never had it. <laughs> I think yeah, I've that, tried soup, just about is, everything on that menu except the lobster foe. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, you got you you gonna come with that next time. We gonna have it. We we will. Uh, you know, I mean, we can place the order anytime. You guys come down, let me know, and I got you guys taken care of. You know, yeah. Thanks, thanks. Yeah, Matt. and and you think it's nutritious because it's there's a bone broth and like bone marrow in it. It's is that what it is or or what? Why is it so nutritious? Um, you know, it's a secret. You know, like I said, sometimes I want to get upset at me for, for telling the recipe because I help her cook it. Um, you know, a lot of people they they don't cook it the proper way, so you have to cook it with the right type of bones, um, the right part of the the. The bones in the, in in the, in the uh, the cow, you know. So yeah. And so all what happened is all that that nutrients from that bones basically is in, in the soup. So when you eat it, it has a lot of uh, uh, you know nutrients and plus the sodium and the potassium, you know the uh, the protein and the carbohydrates from the noodles, everything kind of blend into a perfect meal. And and you know people who who um, don't you know who works a lot and they work hard. They come here, eat the bowl of soup, and they're like, wow. The next instantly, they got revival, you know. It's, it's like, because your body needs a lot of fluid. And a lot of people, they, they eat like dry food or steak, you know. It, it doesn't repl it doesn't fill up your body like, a, you know, a bowl of soup with noodles uh, with uh, beef. Uh, we use filet mignon steak, so the beef is very tender. So when you eat it, it's so soft, and, it, 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 uh, and, the, and the broth is so amazing, and the noodle is the perfect. Type of noodles guys are making me use. hungry here. I'm, I'm about to drive to Vero <laughs> Beach. <laughs> I, I think I think you know I think people who who eat our broth our soup here they said that's the best they ever had. You know I mean this this broth here this soup here it's it's so famous uh in Vietnamese population. You know if anywhere there's a large Vietnamese uh population you're gonna see people waiting in line to eat this soup because yeah. they know it's good for you. But so far, whoever ate our soup, they said this is the best pho they ever had. So uh, really, it, it's, yes. And it's your wife's recipe. Is it like a family recipe? Yes, yes. And, you know, um, actually, this recipe was was learned from uh, a person, uh, another auntie of my wife, who uh, cooked pho for a living. She basically that's that's all she does. She cook uh, pho for a living in Vietnam. And um, she builds a mansion just just cooking for, and uh, she's been doing it for twenty some years, and and she she show us the recipe to cook it. That's the reason why I, our, our I, I've is heard so of that. different. Let, 
I'll be up there sometime this week. I'll, I'll get an order for to bring back to Palm Beach if anyone wants. You know, <laughs> let us know. Let us know in the comments if you want to try some of uh, Dad's folk, and uh, we'll, yeah, we'll make a run up I, there I and bring, bring it back. It <laughs> All right, yeah. Now, now that we talked about soup for the last twenty minutes, <laughs> let's uh, let's talk about fighting. That's what we got you here. So, uh, let's right. let's jump ahead. Now, now we're here for the soup to, uh, too. Yeah, go ahead. of course. But go ahead, go ahead. All of it. All of it. It's all good. It's all relevant. But, uh, you know, with the bare knuckle, so obviously you're 2 and 0 on bare knuckle now. You got one knockout out of those two fights. Uh, the next fight was scheduled for when? Uh, May 16. So, uh, from what I heard, uh, they haven't canceled the fight yet. It was supposed to be at the Hard Rock Stadium. Um, you know, they, they already signed the contract with the, with the uh, what's it called? I think it's the, the Miami Dolphin. Is that uh, the, the stadium for the Miami Dolphin? The Hard Rock yes. Stadium, right? So they basically, right. uh, David David Feldman, I think they signed a, to, to book that venue. So uh, at the moment, I haven't heard anything. So the fight is, the, the show is still possibly a, a go on if all this lockdown is over by, uh, you know, April 30th by Donald Trump. Yeah. So um, I need to start training right now. I mean, if that fight is going to happen because this whole time, you know, with this lockdown, uh I haven't done anything yet other than just you know waiting to see what's gonna happen. So I don't I don't want to be surprised if, if it's gonna be on May 16. You know, that's my birthday. So I hope it's that day so I can go watch some good fights on my birthday. Yeah, absolutely. You know that that fight between <laughs> me and Johnny Burford is gonna be a, a crazy war because he he likes to to throw down just like I do. So um, yeah. I think it's kind of scary for people who's going to be watching. Not yet. My, my, see my wife over here. She's like, hey, I'm hey, using the what's up? I'm using the restaurant. There she right is. Now and, and, uh, yep. Yeah. There's the chef of all chefs. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, um, that, that fight, uh, I look forward to that fight. I mean, I think, um, I think it's possibly going to be, a crazy fight. I mean, because I don't back down and, and Johnny Bear don't back down. So it's going to be a crazy uh, war. You know, if I'm not going to knock me out, so we'll see. Yeah. So and, I know, and when, did, I know. when did Dave tell you that you're going to get that fight? Oh, May 16th. May 16th. No, when did he tell you that, that you're going for the belt with against Johnny Bedford? Uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, I, th I think like a month, a month and a half ago, I called him up, and uh, he's like, "Yep, that fight is already set and go." So, um, wow, you know, David, David, David said, you know, that's the fight we want. Because when I spoke to him uh, uh, in June of last year, remember I told you I went down to Tampa to speak with David. Yeah. And David, uh, David uh, had a plan. He said, "Look, you, you've been boxing for a long time. You you beat Miguel Flores, and you don't get a shot." So. You know, you, you, you sure you want to do bare knuckle? I said, yes, I want to do bare knuckle. I want to show people that I'm what I'm capable of. And he said, okay, uh, we're going to we gonna give you um, a couple fights, and then you're going to fight for the title if you win, if you succeed. And uh, so basically the first two fights was to, to see where I'm at, to build my fan base, and the third fight is to fight for the title. So uh, he said, when you're the champion, you know, it's going to bring a lot of interest to uh, bare knuckle too. Because I've been a boxer, and so all the people in Boston are going to be tuning in because you know how it is with uh, MMA, MMA fighters and, and boxers. They have a rivalry, so for me to yeah. represent boxing, I have, I have to look good instead of being like Paulie, who lost to uh, in MMA fighters. <laughs> yeah. Well, I remember the date. So actually, it was it was July because we came and saw you at the restaurant, and that's what we were all having that discussion about bare knuckle. Steve and I went over to the uh, Florida Boxing Hall of Fame and. Uh, the bare knuckle championship between Artem Lobov and, and Pauli Malignaggi. And I, I remember sitting at the table while we were eating and I was telling you, man, everything I saw that night was the boxers, everybody who'd been training boxing were just hitting their opponents too hard. And I think right. Steve, what was it? Like four guys broke their hands that night. Pauli yeah. Included. What, um, hands that night. Yeah. One of them broke both of them. Yeah. Julian, I mean, Julian guys, Lane uh, broke both his hands. It, it was like it was just yeah. that Paulie did too. That boxer yeah, learns. Paulie too. It's it's the thing where you know you you follow through with your punches, and I think in bare knuckle you can't do that. If you follow through with those punches, you're going to damage yourself more than you are your opponent. I think it's all about really sticking and moving, getting those points, almost like more amateur boxing than it is professional boxing similarities. Would you agree with some of that? Right. Matt? Okay. 
Yeah, yes, yeah. You know, I had to learn it the hard way, you know, uh, when I fought Travis Thompson. And uh, I think the second fight, uh, th th I think the thing is that you have to train bare knuckle. You have to, you have to train your knuckle to withstand the impact. Uh, you know, if you, like I said, when I spoke to uh, Travis Thompson, man, he, he, I said, what do you do to train your knuckle? He's like, you know, I keep hitting the, the wall with it. You keep tapping it, tapping, tapping it. So with any, with anything in your body, you know, with your shin too. If you keep tapping your shin for like Muay Thai fighters, they, they, they keep training the shin to withstand the impact. And same thing with the knuckle. Yeah. You know, one thing about boxers is they always train with wraps on and with gloves on. So it absorbs the, all the impact. Yeah. So it would bear not. You just gotta. You gotta, train, you gotta keep. That's what I need to do. I need to start, um, you know, hitting my knuckle, uh, on on the concrete floor or at least on sand or something, until my knuckle can withstand that impact. And most of the time, I don't think that they break their hand. It's more of the time it, it's just bruised, you know, because um, I mean, uh, if you're gonna break your hand, you probably broke the the picky knuckle instead of the the two big knuckles. You know that absorbs most of the shock. Uh, I don't think a lot of those guys don't. I mean, I mean, you got you have to hit with a lot of force to break that knuckle. And a lot of guys, you know, have uh, have fragile hands, so maybe that could cause the the them and different technique. You know, if you throw your punch with it with a with an improper technique, you can break your hands too. Now that first fight, I remember afterwards, uh, Steve and I were walking around the the Hard Rock lobby and. Uh... I can't recall his name. One of the guys that works with you at the restaurant, he saw us and told us, you know, you were you were getting looked at at a doctor. It was like 3 a.m. You had your hands in a bucket of ice. It was painful. But at that time, the doc looked you over and what did he say? You, you didn't break your hands from that first fight. Right. But what what did he say you did? What was the diagnosis? Uh, just, you know, Bruce, you know, Bruce, like I said, if you keep because my hands wasn't used to hitting anything hard, bare knuckle, you know, so. Um, so basically, which is just a bruise on it and, and the swelling. Uh, and I, I, once I ice it a couple of days, you know, the swelling went down and it, it slowly healed. Um, that's it. I remember it was bad. I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't get your wraps off. The difficulty getting your oh, wraps yeah, off. Oh, yeah, yeah. Your hands right. are so swollen. Because, uh, right. And, you know, I, I, after the fight, you know, um, when the, all the adrenaline rush is over, you know, that's when you start to feel the pain. And uh, I thought I broke my hand, really. But, um, you know, when I, when I ice it and I was able to, you know, grip my fist, because if you break your hand, it's going to be hard for you to make a fist. And I was able to make a fist, and the, the, the swelling was reduced. And um, I had some customer come in. So. But, uh, so, you know, uh, my, once my hand was healed, you know, I was, I was happy. I was ready to go again. All right. So obviously you got a lot going right. on with Bare Knuckle. I know you had mentioned uh, if you if you win this fight against Johnny Bedford, you're looking to step up and wait and then go after uh, Jason White. Is that is that a fight? Right, right. For? That that is the plan. You know, like I said, you got, I I'm not taking a step backwards to defend that belt. I mean, unless there was a bigger name out there, Johnny Bedford has the belt. Um, I don't have any doubt that I'm not gonna be able to beat him. You know, the the, the key is to have proper training and. I believe in myself, though. Once I have enough training in, uh, I beat him and take the belt, and then uh, we're going to have bigger fights. So, you know, Jason Knight is possibly the biggest the biggest name in Baron Alka right now in my uh, that is close to my weight class, or Autumn LaBalve. But uh, Autumn lost to Jason Knight, so um, I would I would like to fight, uh, you know, um, Autumn. Because I told you, I told you when you when you came to see me in what was in, was in June, I said I want to be able to fight Autumn and beat him and call out Conor McGregor. So that was part of the plan. But since yeah. uh, Autumn lost to Autumn Jason McGregor. Knight, uh, so I, I want to be able to fight Jason Knight. And Jason Knight said he's interested in fighting me as well. So um, I think because I because he spar with um, I think he spar with uh, uh, you know Travis Thompson. So Travis, uh, you know, kind of you know you know taught him a lot about boxing. I think because because uh, Jason Knight is more of an MMA fighter. So when when Travis Thompson was in camp with uh, with Jason Knight in his last fight, I guess uh, you know um, Jason Knight knew that you know uh, he needs to box in that fight, and he looked very good against Autumn Ball and, and one. So I think that's the if I if I get the belt from Johnny Bever, I don't I don't want to overlook him and disrespect the champion, but um, I'm just 
like I said, you know, you think it's gonna happen. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get that belt and then I'm gonna fight Jason Knight for maybe hopefully Jason Knight get the one forty five pounder belt too. So I can be two division world champion. And then it, once one fifty five got a champion, I wanna move up too. I wanna do what Conor McGregor has done in MMA. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well I know that the fights between Artem Lobov and Jason Knight, the pair of fights that they had were like just these bloody wars. I mean, everybody knows about right. those. That first fight, that's why they look forward to having that rematch so badly for so long. I mean, is that the kind of fight you'd like to have with Jason Knight, just an all-out bloody war? I I think Jason Knight's going to – he, he knows that um, if I was to fight him, I don't think he's anybody's going to want to slug with me because I'm a pretty good slugger. Uh, I don't know. I just – I slug pretty good. So, um, so I think Jason Knight, if I was to fight him, he's going to look to, you know, use his range. Same thing with Johnny Bedford. Johnny Bedford likes to come in and slug too. So, I mean, I, I don't mind slugging, you know. Um, my punch is going to be faster. It's going to be harder. It's going to get there quicker than theirs. So, I don't, I think, that, uh, I don't want to give them away my game plan. But, uh, if they want to slug, we can slug. If they want to box, I'll make the fight easy. Uh, for me, I can do that both. So, you know, now people know that I could slug and I also could box in my last two fights. So, I'm a well-rounded fighter, you know. So no, obviously do you like better? Do you like the bare knuckle or do you like the boxing better? To tell you the truth, I like I like bare knuckle better. But yeah. the only problem I gotta, the only problem I gotta deal with is my my you know my my hand. You know, my hand from getting injured. Uh, you know, I, even though I knocked out um. Adele in one round, but I still, uh, you know, had a, a Bruce knuckle within one round because I think I was hitting him pretty hard there. I mean, it, it wasn't major, but, you know, it, it, it went away in a couple of days, you know. But I, I really like bare knuckle because, you know, it's, it's, it's a real fight. It's a real warrior. You know? It's unlike boxing. Boxing is more of a sweet science. Because you know, most fighters uh, at the elite level, they want a different mentality. Like they want to box you, they want to oh. hit you and not get hit. In bare knuckles, those guys that are gonna fight you, that that is in there, they they know what they're up against. So they are like, man, it's gonna be a real fight. They gonna they gonna make it. They're gonna make it exciting. That's it's why funny. I like bare knuckles so much. I was just I was just about to say right before Steve played that on there. I was gonna say. You sure you didn't bruise that knuckle when you hit him with that blood that splattered all over the camera that everybody <laughs> remembers seeing during the show? And then he just, he just played it. So I don't know, Steve, you can roll it again because I don't know if anybody caught that. Yeah, roll it again because we were listening to Dad speak. Yeah, that was, that was crazy, right? I think that's the first time blood splattered on the camera like that. So, that um, perfect. <laughs> yeah, that probably <laughs> got people in the first and man. second row, too. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah, to tell you the, the truth, uh, my, my hand wasn't hurt. My left hand doesn't, didn't, didn't get hurt in that fight. It was my right hand. Um, I think I must have hit him with some, some good shot with the right hand, but my right hand was bruised up. My left hand wasn't even bruised up at all. So, I think it's, it's the placement of the punch. You know, if you hit the guy in the chin or in the face, um, you don't hurt your hand as much as you hit the guy on the top of the head, you know. Yeah. Uh, when you hit the guy and, on the and top much, of the head, that's much when respect. You, uh, you know, when I when I saw you knock uh, Abby out, which you know we're a fan of Abby's as well. Um, you know, the the crowd. You know, we, we were waiting for him to get up before we, you know, applauded you, and you did the same. Um, you know, it, that was you know true true sportsmanship, um, for sure by you. Yeah, thank you. You know, uh, we all do it as, as uh, you know, as a, a way to, to, you know, we, like I said, we are a prize fighter. We fight for our family. Yeah. So there's no, ha there's no hatred. So whatever we do, we talk shit, you know, just to build up, build up the fight. So, you know, during the fight, after the fight, regardless who wins, you know, we have to show mutual respect. And, yeah. you know, like I said, I, I really felt for Adele. I know he, that he was very hungry to win. And unfortunately, somebody has to win that night, and it was me. And I, I did really felt I felt really bad yeah. that uh, that the way that he went out. And uh, I'm glad that he was okay because it would have been devastating for me if something would have happened to him, you know. Yeah, for and, sure. And, uh, I, that's why I said I, I want to be able to treat him 
to uh, any meal at my restaurant once he got a chance. So uh, he, he said he was going to come back right after the fight. But that weekend, I, I had a couple of days off. But uh, now that my restaurant is all open, maybe after this lockdown, I, I invite him to come down with his family. And, and I would love to take care of him because, you know, we all fighters, you know, do, we do it to take care of our family. So. We're going to have a party right. uh, at your restaurant after this lockdown, for sure. <laughs> for real, <laughs> yeah. party. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the, all the uh, bare knuckle fighters, I mean, come on down. <laughs> yeah, something that connects what Matt was saying. He was actually uh, asking kind of something similar. I was going to ask you, which is, um, I mean, with everything you got going on with bare knuckle right now, uh, I mean, are you ready to pivot at any moment back to boxing if uh, a good fight were to come around? Well, this is this is my plan right here. Um, I want to fight, like I said, I want to fight uh, Johnny Bedford, win the belt from him, and then. If um if if they like I said the next plan was to fight Jason Knight because Jason Knight or Alan Labov would be the next target that I'm looking forward to so I will fight them and uh, I think that will, if I beat them and, and uh, if they are one of the the champion at 145 that will bring a lot of interest into bare knuckle they'd be like what two division world champion you know and then you know if somebody in boxing or MMA wants to uh, get a piece of me. I would love to get back into boxing and fight for one of those champions, you know, who's holding one of the belt. So that way I could beat them, be a world champion in boxing, uh, accomplish my dream. Or, you know, if one of those UFC fighters want to fight me, I'll go into the UFC too. Because, you know, I have a full martial arts background. And that was my plan before uh, I did boxing. I was to fight in the UFC. So hopefully, you know, all of this can be coming true in the near future. Well, that's yeah, awesome, man. That. We're yeah, definitely we're in your corner, man. You're you're a great guy, good sportsman, and and uh, we're definitely looking forward to seeing you again. Um, and I definitely think you'll take that belt in the uh, in bare knuckle BKFC without a doubt. You know, so I'm I'm glad you're heading in that direction. Yeah, thank you. You know, nothing comes easy. Like I said, uh, we can we I, I talk I talk with a lot of confidence because if you believe it, you can do it. And a lot of people, they lack the confidence. And I think I've been doing this long enough to have enough confidence. So uh, I believe in my ability. And, and, and also, you got to put in a hard work and dedication. If you can talk and you can fight, but if you don't put the work ethic in, nothing can come through. So uh, I know I, the road ahead of, uh, of me is very, uh, very hard. So um, I can't wait to uh, till this lockdown is over so we can get back into fighting again. For sure, for sure. That, you know, but before... Before you leave us, so just curious, how's the family? They all they are doing good here. The kids are not going to school, so uh, they just come here. They going crazy, running around, going fishing, and uh, I mean the restaurant is only doing maybe maybe twenty percent of what it used to do before the lockdown. So we're just trying to trying to make it out there, you know, because everybody got bills to pay, and uh, and uh, maybe in the next month or so, I want to make some announcement. Uh, and, and uh, like I said, I don't want to. I don't want to do any announcement right now because uh, uh, I, I'm doing something else uh, different. A lot of I have a lot of uh, friends here in this area, so. Um, but I look forward to the fight. You know, the fight in May 16 if it happens, and uh, but everybody's doing great here. Just trying to stay away from uh, from people who is sick and got coronavirus because we don't want to get that right now. Yeah, for right. sure. Definitely not. Good luck. And when you are ready to break that news, who are you going to call? Come on. Definitely. But, you know, it, <laughs> it's good <laughs> and bad. So uh, <laughs> I think I think it's, it's some good news and some bad news. But it's not, not the major. You know, I, I, just, I just made some change. Uh, so that, that was all that is. You know? But I still going to run the restaurants. So the restaurants, is, it's going to be – I, I want to focus more on the restaurant and fight. You know, so that's something uh, that I so want I saw, to I saw you doing uh doing the pads with your son. Is he uh right. looking to do, uh is he looking to get into boxing like his dad? Yeah, you know, you know, my 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 son at this age, they, they automatically want to do it. Before I used to tell him, look, let's go, let me train you. Now they come to me, they're like, Dad, can you train me? So I was like, I better train them because they're gonna be in high school pretty soon. And uh, you know, if somebody picks on them, they're gonna know how to take care of themselves. And at yeah. the same time, you know, when, you, when you learn boxing, it's always good because it, it helps you gain the confidence, you know, throughout life. Not just, you know, do it as a sport, but, you know, throughout life. Because when you carry yourself with a lot of confidence, people can sense it and they will back away from picking on you. Yeah. 
How old were you when you uh, went to the Golden Gloves? How old when you got the Golden Gloves? Well, I started boxing at 12 years old, and um, I went to Junior Olympics uh, when I was 15 and 16. I was I was national. Uh, I think I got a bronze medalist in, in the Junior Olympics. I was supposed to win gold. I beat Andre Durrell. Yeah. In the in the yeah, I beat Andre Durrell in the quarterfinals, really? and then yes, Andre Andre Durrell was was fighting at 90, 95 pounds in two thousand. Uh, yes, in two thousand yeah. was that two nineteen ninety seven. 98. Wow. Yeah. And, and guess what? And and after one, after he lost to me because he was favored to win. He actually, he still fought the same way uh, when he was in Junior Olympic and 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 there he went pro. It's it just that when I was fighting Junior Olympic, I was very aggressive. I didn't give them a chance to uh, to breathe. You know, I was on them nonstop. I was very aggressive, and and that's the same way that I fight in bare knuckle. You know, or in boxing, and and you know, for you to fight. Um, only uh, you know three three minute round, you can do that. And in bare knuckle, it's only ten minutes of fighting, so you can you can put nonstop pressure. But once you start to fight ten rounds and twelve rounds in boxing, where you fight for thirty minutes, you can't put constant pressure like that. And right, you right. got to know how to pace yourself. Yeah, that's I, why saw, you, I, saw you, I had a lot. Of, I saw you doing mitts with uh with a big heavyweight too. That guy looks huge, Joey. Yeah, he was a. Yeah, his name is John Moran. John, John Moran. Moran. Uh, we call it. Yeah, we call him little guy. He's he's been around West Palm Beach. He's been a wrestler. He's he has a lot of talent, you know, and he has, he's very quick of his side. So, um, you know, like I said, if he wants to do boxing full time, and, and and you know, go professional, you know, he could be a, a force in the sport of boxing. Yeah, you know? big boy. Yeah, definitely. So yeah. you've been in the boxing game for a long time. Who who are some other guys that you might have fought in the in the amateurs or? Or uh, maybe sparred with as a as a professional that are some big um, names. You know, in, in the Olympic Training Center, one of my teammates was Timothy Bradley. So uh, Timothy Bradley, I think the, he was he was fighting at 140 pounds. I was fighting at 126 pounds. So we were teammates for three years, and uh, you know he he became a superstar and a future Hall of Famer. He fought Manny Pacquiao three times. So yes, um, you know we were. We, we were actually sweet mate. We were sweet mate. We share the same uh, same dorm room, you know. Um, so um, you know, it's a small world out there. Uh, who would thought that one of my roommates were were uh, you know fighting back at three times? And then one of my other roommates is Travis Kaufman. You know, he was a heavyweight champion. That's how I get to know him and his dad because he was my roommate. Because every semester, we switch up roommate. Head coach is El Mitchell. He had David Reed. He had Vernon Forrest. He had a lot of guys that he he mentored. So he was a head coach in the Olympic Tren Training Center, and uh, you know he loved me, and I love him, and uh, we still keep in contact here today. You know he had a lot of good fighters that he still uh, trained. Um, he's I'm from sure. Philly. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Yeah, and uh, it, that's great, man. You've been in this game a long time. I'm sure you have a lot of stories. Um, we are running out of time now. Uh, we've been on for uh, for an hour, We're running an hour and a couple of minutes. So, uh, Steve, you got any more questions for Dad? I would love to see that. Uh, let's talk to Dave. Let's talk to the president. Let's uh, tell Dave to uh, call the president. And tell him, you know, we need to uh, get this thing over with, and you know, May sixteenth, have a fight, celebrate, party. I'd, I'd love I'd love to do that, but uh, I don't think it's going to happen. Well, no. then, then I then I see right now I, I don't need to train right if it's not going to happen right because I don't want to I don't want to train too early, and then and then and, and, you know be disappointed about it. So I'm just yeah. kind of waiting for that news. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I mean, train. Yeah, do the jump rope and stay in shape and you know keep healthy, but. Um, May 16th, we're in April 1st. Uh, I don't know. You're in April 1st, the rest of us. Tomorrow. Are March yeah. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow, April 31st. But uh, yeah, I, I'd love to see it. Damn, I, I don't want to spend my birthday, you know, stuck inside, but um, I'd love to see you fight on my birthday. Um, I don't know that. But yeah, on a positive <laughs> note, Stay healthy. 
Mike, you're a little dark. Matt, you're a little dark in your videos. I don't know why. Yeah, I got to work on the lighting in here. You know, what are you going to do? It's getting dark out here. It's, it's like 7 o'clock. It's getting dark. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it's lighter out where you are than where we are. Yeah, I'm, I'm right, outside, I, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, right I'll, have, right now. I'll have to move my studio to the front porch, you know. All right, but it was great talking to you, Dad. And uh, all you listeners out there, thanks for, for tuning in. And uh, I think we're going to be back on Thursday, Thursday night, this okay. Thursday night with uh, special guests. But we're not going to tell you who because it's a surprise. Surprise. Right. Surprise. Do with next time. Uh, let me give a shout out to... Uh, to the fighting news, thank you guys so much, Stephen, Mike, and Matt. Thank you for your time, and I want to thank all my fans who who tuning in. Um, you know, if you guys want to follow me on Instagram, that be that, or Facebook, same same exact uh, username, that be that, and uh, at that be that, you'll be able to find me on there. Look forward to seeing uh, you guys soon. All right, all right, all right. peace all out. All right, Dad. Thanks a lot. Have yeah, a good night, buddy. We'll Take care, guys. Take care. So that's a wrap. Mike. That's a wrap, Steve. You're a little dark. All right. Um, I don't right. know why. We're all good. We're Did all you turn dark. the lights off in your room or something? Yeah, say good night, you know, because it's we're still running on Facebook there. Say yeah. good night to the little that's friend. Good. Say hello to my little friend. So I just that's wanted good. to uh, mention, you know, 2019 Florida MMA Awards for the best media source. Follow, like us, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, website, and now the Fighting News TV. Tune Doesn't in. Doesn't get any better. Doesn't get any better than that. Doesn't get any better than that. Does it? Good to go. All right. Good to see you, Mike. You're a little dark. Be good all. Next time. All right, guys. Peace. Later. Good night. See you. Later.